In this video, we're going to count down 13 pieces of gear that I use and recommend for a mobile home recording studio. Let's go. All of the gear we're talking about in this video is listed on my gear guide at studiolivetoday.com slash gear and you can jump straight into the different retailers up the top here or you can actually check this out. This is what we're looking at. These are the 13 pieces of gear. Let's dive in and get started. The first thing you'll need for a mobile recording setup is a mobile device. So this is what I use, the 2020 iPad Pro 11 inch. Now, you can see here that this one's currently unavailable, but there's newer models here like the 2021, the M1 iPad Pro. If that price tag looks a little bit scary to you, Basically, any iPhone or iPad that's been made in about the last five years is going to be pretty great for creating music. And I've got a heap of videos and resources right here on the channel, down in the description, that can help you out. To record to your iPhone or your iPad, you'll need an audio interface. And this is the one that I'm loving right now. It's the iRig Pro Duo IO. And you can see there, it's a pretty good price here in June of 2022. It comes with the ability to record two sources. It's got balanced outputs there for your monitor speakers. It's got a headphone jack. You can record two microphones, a line input, or two guitars or instrument cables at the same time. It's a great little interface and a really great way to get high quality audio, whatever you're recording, directly into your mobile device. The other piece of gear that I use in my mobile rig is this one, the iRig Stream Pro. So because I'm an acoustic artist, I like to be able to record and live stream wherever I go. And the iRig Stream Pro does a great job of that, mostly because not only can you plug in either a microphone or a guitar or instrument input, we have RCA stereo input in here too. So what I can do is I can be on the go and I can plug in directly from a mixer or from my amplifier straight into the iRig Stream Pro. So if you're a streamer or you want to do things live, this is a great piece of kit to check out. Now, while we're talking audio interfaces, my go-to audio interface for a really long time has been this one, the Steinberg U. 22c this is great if you've got a more sort of permanent setup and you want to set yourself up to record on your iphone or your ipad again you've got those two inputs just like the irig pro duo you've got independent game controls on those you've got headphone output you've got the ability to output to monitor speakers and the cool thing about this is when you flip it around to the back you've got midi in and out as well and you can power this not only directly via usb 3 but also via a 5 volt dc connection so that means means that if you're on the go, you can plug straight into a portable battery. I've got a complete review of this one video linked down below. Now, it's one thing to record your audio. You also need to monitor that audio, and that's where a good set of monitor headphones comes in. Now, these have been my go-to for a very long time for the home and mobile studio. They're the Sennheiser HD280 Pro. They are a great sounding monitor headphone. They've got the curly cord, as you can see there. They fold up. They're nice and compact. They're over ear headphones and closed back, which means that when you're recording or mixing or mastering, you're going to get great quality sound every time. You'll also want to capture the best quality audio. And if you're recording vocals or guitars or other instruments, a good quality dynamic microphone like this one, the D5 from AKG is a great option. This is a handheld dynamic vocal microphone, but it can be used for a bunch of different purposes. And it just gives you really clean and crisp audio right there into your digital audio workstation. So you can plug this in with an XLR cable straight into one of the audio interfaces we talked about before and you get great quality sound. Now, this is great for louder vocals, maybe a guitar amplifier, but what if you've got more delicate sounds? Maybe you've got a quieter vocal or acoustic guitar. We'll come back to the gear guide here. If you scroll on down to my desktop setup, the AT2020 microphone is what I would recommend for that. This is a large diaphragm condenser microphone, and this gives you a lot more detail for those more subtle sounds. So if you've got the budget, maybe pick up one of each, a dynamic and a condenser microphone, but you may want to choose one 
or either of these for your recording. Another piece of kit that you may want to consider for your mobile setup is a keyboard. Yes, a MIDI controller. This is the M Audio Keystation 49 Mark III. It's my go-to MIDI keyboard. It's cost-effective, but doesn't skimp on the quality and the features. You still get your modulation wheel, you get your pitch bend wheel and your volume controls there. You get 49 keys that are touch sensitive and you can plug it in USB plug and play. It's class compliant, which means it's going to work with all your iPads and iPhones and it really is just a great keyboard and it comes in smaller versions. So there's one that's a 32 key version and you can go all the way up to 88 keys. So the M Audio Key Station, definitely a great value solution if you're a keyboard player and want to record some MIDI into your tracks. Now, if you've got a USB audio interface and a MIDI keyboard and maybe some other devices and you want to use them all at the same time, guess what you'll need? One of these, a powered USB hub. This is one that I've been using for a very long time. It's the TenDAC powered USB hub. It's got four ports of USB 3, as well as a smart charging port on the front there. It's a great little hub. I've been using it for a couple of years now. It hasn't missed a beat, and you can use it with either a USB-C connection straight in via USB to your Mac or your PC if you're on desktop, or even with an iPad or an iPhone using Lightning, as long as you've got the Lightning to USB 3 adapter. And there's a link to that one and a video all about how to connect up your iPads and iPhones down in the description. However, many of you may have an iPad with USB-C. So if you're using an iPad Air 4th or 5th generation or any of the newer model iPad Pros, you have a USB-C port and you'll need something like this. This is the Atola USB-C hub. There's a bunch of different varieties of this one, but in its simplest form, as you can see, they're super cheap and all you do is connect up to your iPad. You've got three USB 3.0 ports here to plug in your USB gear and you can even charge everything up, including your iPad, using the included USB-C power connection. So a great little adapter to get your gear connected to your iPad with USB. USB-C. Headphones are great, but when you want to take that next step to some monitor speakers, but you don't want to break the bank, this is where it's at. These are the Presonus Eris powered studio monitors. This is the 3.5 inch models. And as you can see there, you can usually pick them up for under $100. These are a great value set of near field monitor speakers, which means that you can plug them straight in to your audio interface. So either of the interfaces we talked about or pretty much any other interface that has balanced outputs, plug them straight into the era. So there's even Bluetooth models. And if you want to get a larger sound, so you've got a larger room, you can even upgrade and go up to the four five and all the way up to eight inch speakers. So the Presonus Eris monitor speakers, they're an amazing bit of kit for your mobile studio setup. Now I know what you're thinking, not everyone out there plays guitar, but if you do play guitar and you're looking for a good quality acoustic, yeah, this is what I picked up many years ago. It's the Taylor 110E. It's a fantastic acoustic guitar. It's pretty much their entry level but it really does punch above its weight. It's got some amazing features in there, really good quality sounding pickup so that you can send the audio straight out to your amplifier, or I do live shows every week here called The Happy Hour. Time that flies when you're having fun Sometimes feels you're the only one who knows And I use this plug straight into my mixer. It sounds fantastic. So if you are a guitarist and you want to get a guitar that's not going to be, you know, thousands of dollars, but it's going to be high quality, check out the Taylor 110E. A couple of final optional extras. Now, this is something that I never thought I'd pick up, which is the Apple Magic Keyboard. When this was first released, I thought, yeah, that's wonderful, but it's not for me. I don't need a keyboard that that's expensive. But I went out and bought one and guess what? It was a game changer. Having a trackpad and a keyboard attached right here to my iPad, having the charging port right there on the side, ready to go whenever I need it, is actually a great feature. Again, it's not going to be for everyone, but maybe go into an Apple store if there's one nearby and play with one of these you'll probably fall in love and end up buying one just like I did. Last but definitely not least is this, the Logitech M590 mouse. The reason you haven't been hearing a whole lot of clicking and scrolling and scraping is that this is my mouse of choice. It is the silent mouse and it clicks like this you barely hear it. So if you're recording in the home studio, you've got people around you, you're a mobile creator, having a mouse is actually really cool. If you've never used a mouse on an iPad or an iPhone before, 
It is amazing and any Bluetooth mouse will work, but this happens to be the one that I recommend. Once again, for more information, jump over to studiolivetoday.com slash gear. Check out my mobile setup, my desktop recording setup, and my master list for all the gear that I use to record in the home and mobile studio.